In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make a chevron pattern in CS6, and if you're working in an earlier version of Illustrator, I'll show you how to do that as well. So to start, I've got the rectangle tool, and I'm just going to click once on the artboard and start with a 2-inch square, and hit Enter. And I have Smart Guides turned on, so make sure you have yours turned on as well. The shortcut is Command or Control U, and that's going to help us align things here. And then once again, with my rectangle tool, this time I'm going to draw a darker blue square right over the top of this original, and I'm going to make sure that I have them aligned perfectly. That's why I have the Smart Guides on. So just click and drag and then stop when you get to the center line and Smart Guides will let you know that. And you want to make this rectangle the thickness of the stripe that you want and then release. Next, with the white arrow tool, I'll hold down the shift key and that will allow me to simultaneously select these two anchor points on the right hand side of this rectangle and then still holding down shift, I can drag these two points together downward. Next, I'm going to switch to the black arrow and then I'm going to copy and paste in front. Command or Control C, Command or Control F. And with the copy, I'm just going to drag this bounding box handle right over here until it snaps exactly to the other side. Okay, so now I have a single unit of a chevron pattern. Now if I want to make these more pointy, I can just select both and drag them down. If I want to change the thickness, I can do the same thing as I did before, just holding shift and grabbing one, two anchor points on one side here and dragging them down. Then I'll go ahead and delete this second half of a chevron and then copy, paste in front, drag over the copy like this. So I've made thicker chevrons. And it's important when you're scaling the chevron not to go outside the boundaries of that two inch background square. And so once you've got your single chevron, you're pretty much ready to go into pattern mode. But just for the sake of being extra careful, I'm gonna save a copy over here but right here, I'm going to take these two half chevrons and I'm going to use the Shape Builder tool that's right over here in the tool panel. And the shortcut is Shift M. And when I have that with these two sides selected, I can just drag and that merges them. Now that's not a necessary step, but it does make this look a little bit better. Um, you'll see tiling artifacts come up a little bit easier if you don't join these two halves together. Okay, so now I have everything I need here. I'm just gonna select, go over to the Pattern Options panel, or you can do this in the Object menu and select Make Pattern. Now Adobe Illustrator is telling me that this swatch has been added to my Swatches panel. That's fine, so I'll hit OK. And here's my new pattern. So if I want to make adjustments, I can, but here inside pattern mode, I can't use the Shape Builder tool, unfortunately. I can use the Pathfinder, so that's why I merged these on the outside before we came in here. Uh, but I still have a copy of the chevron that's in two pieces, and that'll make it easy for me to go back and change it if I need to. Okay, so my pattern is ready, and I'm just going to hit the left arrow to exit pattern mode while saving this pattern. Let's just make a rectangle and see how this looks. Okay, so here's my first chevron pattern. And you can see tiling artifacts show up at certain zoom levels. And this is how you check to see that it is in fact just a tiling artifact and not something wrong with your pattern. If you can zoom in and out and you'll see them disappear and reappear like this, then you know that these are just uh, Illustrator tiling artifacts that are not going to affect how this pattern exports or prints. If you, at every zoom level, see these little lines popping up, then you have something wrong with your pattern and something was misaligned. Usually that's what it is. But if you can zoom in and out and, and, and the lines disappear at some point, then you know that this pattern is okay. Now, if you're in CS5 and you don't have the new CS6 pattern maker, well then all you have to do is take this single unit here, 
the one that has the merged stripe, and just drag it directly into the swatches panel, and that will create your new pattern swatch. And with this pattern, you don't have to worry about putting in a no fill, no stroke bounding shape. If you've taken my classes before, you've heard this before, but in this case, this pattern, the chevron itself doesn't cross the boundaries of the background shape. So you don't need the no fill, no stroke bounding shape for this. You can just drag it straight into the panel. So that's pretty simple. And I can just test it out once again with a rectangle and I'll select the new pattern swatch and there it is and zooming in and out, this looks good. All right, I'll delete that. Now, if you're in a version earlier than CS5, then you won't have the Shape Builder tool to merge these two halves of the chevron into a single chevron. In that instance, you'll wanna go up to the Window menu and pull down to the Pathfinder panel. And if you select the two shapes and use this option here, you can unite them. So that's how you do it pre-CS5. Okay, I wanna show you one more thing before we wrap this up, and that's how to modify and make multiple stripe chevrons. So I'll be working with the chevron that has the two halves still intact. That's why I saved this, because it's a little easier to edit. And I'll switch to my white arrow tool and then holding down shift, I'll select these two bottom points and holding down shift, dragging this up to shrink the thickness of the stripe. And then I'll switch to my black arrow. And this time I'll hold down the option or alt key. And at the same time, I'll hold down the shift key and drag copy. And I'm just at, leaving a little bit of overlap there with this copy of the stripe. And then to repeat this action, I can use Command or Control D to duplicate that last action. So I've just created another stripe there. And then I'll go in and change the color of these. Make this one a little darker blue. Okay, so I've changed my stripe and I don't need this half of the chevron anymore. So I'll select it and delete it. Take this half, drag it down a little bit just to get it closer to the end. You can make them shallow if you want. You certainly don't have to have them pointy like this. And then Command or Control C to copy, Command or Control F to paste in front, and then I'll just drag all three of these over to the other side until they snap, and there it is. Now in CS5 or earlier versions, you can just drag this right into the swatches panel, and of course you can do that in CS6 as well. But if you want to use the Pattern Maker, you just select everything, go here to the panel, or up to the Object menu and choose Make Pattern. Get the little warning there, OK, and there it is. Now there's a lot going on, a lot of settings here in this panel, which we can't get into in this tutorial. But of course you can dim these copies so you can see the surrounding art and the original art in the center or you can change that back to 100%. You can name your pattern right up here in the name field and then click the left button to exit and save your pattern. Now I'll draw a new rectangle just to test this out. Click on the new swatch and there it is. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and be sure to check out my YouTube channel for the follow-up where I'll show you how to scale the Chevron pattern. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you want to know when I release new tutorials. The address is youtube.com slash coilart.